How's it going folks? John B. here with another Bass Daily. You guys seem to like the last one, so I'm going to keep going with this. This is Bass Daily number two. Basically, um, it's nighttime. It's around, what time is it? It is 10.29 p.m. That's Central Time Zone in Illinois, or Illinois, as we say it. Getting ready to go on a fishing trip tomorrow with Ross, one of the co-founders of Mr. Tagovox, a.k.a. my boss. Um, but we're going to go out on... Three Oaks, because that's like the only big lake around here where you can rent a boat uh, and catch fish. It's basically the only big lake around here besides uh, Lake Michigan, of course. But we're going to go out there and terrorize some deep water fish. I was on a pretty decent deep water bite there the other day. Uh, actually, Matt, from Mr. Tagabox as well, we both went out there. Matt and I both went out there and figured out this awesome deep bite. But I have to give him some credit because he helped me kind of gear off that off that inshore bite and off more onto that offshore bite into like... 30 to 40 feet of water. I mean, we're catching these fish super deep right now. It's summertime. It's uh, it's kind of good to be, you know, late summer, midsummer. So those fish are moving off those shallow areas, especially when you got bird blue skies and not a single breeze to be found. So that's the deal. We're going to be catching them deep tomorrow. I like that kind of fishing. Ross likes that kind of fishing. I think Matt too likes that kind of fishing. Us northern dudes are crazy. We're weird. We like ice fishing. We like fishing in deep water. So this should be a good time. Super pumped. And I'm going to pick up the vlog from there. So on another note, before I pick up, today's video tomorrow. I know that sounds really confusing, but uh, on another note, I would just got off Ike Live. Mike Canelli has this live show that he does, basically a live video broadcast and now a podcast uh, on iTunes, but he does this live show and Ross hooked me up with this great opportunity to be on Ike Live. I was interviewed for like a couple couple minutes and he talked to, you know, asked me basically what I saw at iCast, what lures um, I thought would be kind of innovational uh, and interesting to check out for the 2016 season. But if you guys want to check that out and watch that show, click right here or here or somewhere. I'm going to throw it somewhere and you're going to click on it. But uh, please continue to watch the video. Click on it and come back to this video because this is going to be a good one. We're going to be catching deep water fish. This is going to be a daily, but like I said, these dailies are always going to be fishing related. You know, I may not catch fish in all these dailies, but they're always going to be geared towards fishing. I don't want to kind of stray away and, and you know, walk around and just literally, I don't know, just literally have this camera in my face because I know that gets pretty boring and uneventful. I know you guys like seeing the behind the scenes aspect, but I'm sure you guys also like to see some fish on camera. So we're gonna throw a little bit of add that at you later on in the video, which is tomorrow. But for you guys, it'll be a few seconds. So I hope you guys stay tuned and enjoy today's episode. Day number two, it is 7.31 in the morning. Not as early as I'd hoped. This is the main setup for today. As you can see, it's my rusty and trusty Powell Inferno with, uh, careful now, jeez, with a um, Daiwa Legless on there. Pretty decent finesse setup, I got a 10 pound on there, a little heavy for open water finesse fishing, but um, I also use this setup for fishing around big boulders and stuff like that, so I need a little bit heavier line. The rig that I got going here, actually I just realized I need to re-spool this, dang it. <laughs> uh, but the uh, rig I got going here is a drop shot, of course, but if you can notice something here, Look at the worm, and basically where that weight is connected. Well, it's right there if you can see it. Uh, basically, I'm trying to get it as it's a big leader. Got to use big leaders when you're fishing in this deeper water, especially if they're going to be off the bottom a little bit. And I found while using my sonar that uh, the fish were off; they weren't too tight at the bottom. You know, there were some that were real close to that grass patch and about 20 or 30 feet of water, but majority of them were pushed off a little bit, and they were feeding on suspending bait fish, which I think are perch. Excuse me. Got some big old cranks on deck. Got some big old jigs on deck. And got this little itty bitty drop shot. But that's the key for today. You go and you throw big baits, you find them, search baits, cover some water. Not necessarily a search bait, I actually think this one's more of a search bait. What do you think they're gonna be biting on today, Ma? What do I think they're gonna be biting on today? Yeah. I think I think maybe you're gonna get some largemouth bass today. Oh, I mean what are they gonna I know what I'm gonna be catching today. What do you think they're gonna be biting on today? Oh, top water. <laughs> Definitely top water. God, I hope not. <laughs> today, no, yeah. But I think they're gonna need to use your dip, deeper uh, fish finder. I think maybe that's gonna help you today. Sure. Yeah. So they're gonna be biting on top water, but I'm gonna be using the deeper to find them. 
Yeah, because you're going to start off with tap water, you're going to find out that's not going to work for you, so then you're going to go with a bait, bait caster. Just that? <laughs> Just a bait caster, nothing on it? Yeah, worm. Oh, oh worm. <laughs> nice. I like that idea. That sounds a little bit better. Yeah, but your deeper fish finder is going to help you find them. Mm. But you're going to get lucky because you're going to wear your tackle, tackle box, mystery tackle box shirt. That's what you're going to do. That'll give you some luck. Oh, I thought you were going to spray me. Oh my god. I literally thought you were going to do that. Oh, that's all I need is to, to have another camera going for water. Well, thanks for the tips. Yeah? Pro tips from Susan. So, basically, I think the most important thing that I'm going to talk about in another Clearwater video, um, which I'll just tell you now, but the most important thing to have when you're out fishing clear water is this dude right here. People nowadays have expensive electronics, really effective and easy to use electronics, excuse me. Um, but this little dude is a marker buoy, and this guy helps me from going absolutely insane. And when I mark fish or I see fish on my sonar, I throw this dude right basically right in front of me, or right where I just marked those fish. And then I now know of a constant place to where I marked those fish. And don't spook them too, there's like a little light weight on here, and that doesn't spook them. I can almost 100% guarantee that that thing dropping down to 40 feet of water, they're not even blink an eye, really. They might even hit it because it looks like a big old jigging spoon. But um, that's this thing is like most important. I literally, if I'm deep water fishing and I don't want to have one of these, I will go insane and I'll most likely not have a great day on the water. This dude helps me keep my relations because you're not fishing near anything. You're not fishing near a brush pile or a dock or something easy to find. You're fishing in the middle of the lake an invisible structure but that's my biggest tip for you more than the lures i've got rigged up and the rods this dude always have it if you're fishing on a boat or deep water fishing pro tip number two just arrived at three oaks here with ross we're pretty much ready we're gonna get on some decent fish today water is dead calm so it'd be easy for boat position i don't know how that how that's gonna affect the bite too much last time i was here the conditions were literally identical to this and, you know, I was getting bit left and right, but the bites I were getting were just really nice fish. I mean, I probably had five fish for, like, 12, 13 pounds. So hopefully we can get on a nice bite again. We're throwing drop shots with long leaders. Going to try some crankbaits. I also want to kind of mix in some jig and some Carolina rig bite as well. But we'll have to see how that works. Um, we're just going to, you know, be fishing the old tactic and then maybe advancing from that and kind of adding upon that as we continue today's fishing. But I uh, wish us luck and turn the camera back on when it's out in the water. You ready, Ross? Do it. Let's do it. First cast. We're, we're barely... Dude, both t last, year, you, last time we were here, you had your first cast. I know. Also. On the top water, too. It was the popper. <laughs> Literally first cast with a drop shot. I threw into that dock behind me. It's the only stupid dock in this entire lake. There always seems to be fish under the dock. It's about, about like a two or three quarters. I'm going to get off this dock here in a little bit. But nice fish on the drop shot. Not bad. I'm holding him out a little bit. He looks tiny. He looks tiny. That looks huge. Woo! <laughs> Nice fish though, back in the water she goes. Thank you, girl. A dock fish on a drop shot. There's another one too, they're all over these docks. I did not know. Well, you can see the inside, it's got some nice ball bearings in there. <laughs> yeah, so if you're wondering what the inside of your Sabio flat belly walker look like, oh, smash, smash it, it right into the boat. Straight aluminum, they'll do it. <laughs> all right, next. Next. <laughs> Fishing the, kind of this little drop off right here with a little. Yeah, I might throw a drop is it, yeah, I was gonna say the drop off is really good. As you can see, it kind of it like goes from a foot to just like six or seven instantaneously. Instantaneously, and nice fish like to just kind of chill on the edge of this. It's not super deep water, but it gives them the option. A lot of the early morning fish will kind of hang out in this flat area, and they'll go way in here, and then eventually they'll go way out there. So we're gonna work our way out there eventually. But I want to get to fish this because it looks decent, and I just picked off a fish in about a few feet of water. So I think we get to give it a go. So what's the rig up for you today, Ross? I'm throwing a drop shot here. It's just a six and a half inch plasma tail. The new ones. The new ones. And uh, let's see, on this rod here, I got a River to Sea high depth deep diving crankbait. And I had a uh, Seville flat belly walker, which I smashed into the boat. So it's currently at half of a Seville flat belly walker. Combusted, combusted, right? It yeah, just slowly exploded. It's combusted. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, throw a popper and stuff. But the. Uh, Drop shot, you think, is probably going to be like the main kind of go to, drop especially with this. Money on this lake. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I mean, really, from, from like Mar from like early May to the time this place opens, all the way to when it closes, drop shot always seems to pull through. 
it's one of those rigs that just works great clear water especially this area as well um, I'm throwing basically the same thing he's throwing we're throwing about the same leader length too it's good to have a long leader if you're fishing in super deep water that fish was came out of like three feet of water hit it not even barely um, barely moving it I was just kind of letting it sit there and he kind of ran off with a nice dog fish but if you notice I'm kind of using this strange color right here this is a uh, it's actually a shad color but I let it sit with a bunch of other uh, basically a bunch of other worms that are like watermelon so that shad color that would look like basically like a shad like silver and, and gray is now turned into something that's actually looks pretty cool and that color looks really good for clear water and I like to do that with my baits that I you know don't use a whole lot and just like to see how the color turns out and usually you know nine out of ten times I end up getting a pretty cool looking color so you got this real thick flake in here um, and then a little bit of a little bit of reflective glitter in there as well and it looks real nice in this clear water in the shallow water once I get into deeper water I'll switch to something a little bit more solid and less translucent but for now in this deeper water I'm gonna give this a go but we're gonna we're gonna run the outboard right now as you can see you can probably barely hear me over the engine roaring and we're gonna get over to some, some better fishing spots here first double of the day both on the drop shot pulled the deep route and now we're starting to mark some fish and deeper grass this is like 18 feet and not super deep but deep enough for these little dudes to hit that thing's fat god that thing is loaded wow is he got one oh, that's grass basically we're, we're we're fishing shallow now i mean we're in like we're fishing about five to six feet of water um we caught a few deep in the 15 18 which isn't really the deepest areas we're kind of looking for but with this algae bloom there's not a whole lot of visibility which is really r rare and strange for this lake so we're taking this opportunity to kind of move up a little bit maybe try to find some of those fish in the grass and that with that grass and that algae bloom they have plenty of shade to kind of hang out in and a uh, great place to throw the drop shot on on the outer weed edge and we could be getting in there and catching them but they'll come out for this drop shot kind of like that dock fish did that first one i had i mean i threw it right on the edge of that dock didn't even move it so if the worm sit there and he came out from under that dock and hit it that's the same kind of principle with these weed fishes. They're in these small patches of weed real close to shoreline. I mean, some of, these, some of these weeds are in like four feet of water. Uh, they're coming right out of here and, and, and hitting this drop shot. Across this hooked up right now. That fish came out almost 30 feet of water. I, I was marking one and just set the hook. Nice one. They're all decent fish too, none of them are like super dinks. I mean it's not massive, but it's fish like that are take all day. Drop shot, Miles Mark. As you can see right here, I'm using the deeper, I don't know if you can see that, it's probably pretty bad player, but water and surface temp 73, fish at 26. He was casting about 30, but you can see a little grass, that little green thing right there, kind of above that orange, it's all grass. It's kind of one of the only areas where you can find deep grass. You find it in 40 feet sometimes too, which is pretty crazy, but that's kind of where these fish are at. Super deep water, hanging out above that little weed edge, or that weed line right there. So that's the plan for today. Got the deeper on the back. Got the one right here. Get back there, just catch one. Especially with that rod too. <laughs> Dude, where are these smallmouth at? Another largemouth. Where'd you catch that on? Drop a shot. On a plasma. Smaller plasma tail, though you switch down. Downsize. Nice. I just got fed off by a bike, so I'm every time. So Ross and I have been on a pretty decent pattern right now. It's nothing crazy good, but just been enough to pick up a few fish here and there. I just caught this guy at letting the drop shot sit. Nothing huge, about a pound, a couple quarters, but we're gonna try a little bit deep water spot and maybe call it a day. I'm not sure. We're still trying to figure out what these fish want. I mean, thought they'd be deep. We picked off a few deep. You got one? No. So, we picked off a few deep, and then we ended up going in this little shallow cut right here, and they, uh, they're they up shallow in like, in like, you know, five, six feet of water. So I think they're a little bit everywhere. It all depends on the location. There's not a whole lot of wind here, so maybe they're kind of feeding on bait fish. There's a lot of old bluegill beds and uh, interesting stuff like that. Still throwing the drop shot. Uh, it really hasn't been to throw the white room in this in this 
nice looking calm area just because it's so shallow and the drop shot really doesn't come in huge play when it's so shallow but it seemed to do all right i picked up a few pieces of fish and uh get ahead over to the islands and uh you grab this day i don't know we're what do you think you think we're gonna catch anything on the islands or do you just want to stay here or what it's up to you man i'm, I'm hoping we catch something somewhere <laughs> yeah well, there goes my glasses i want to get a small mouth that's how i like it Yeah, we've seen a lot of smallmouth. I, I picked up one largemouth that was over here on a, on the shallow side of this, like in a foot of water, and I'm reeling it in. And there's like this four, there's like this four, I almost said 400, four pound smallmouth just like chasing it, falling up the boat. It's massive. And the fact that it came out of like that smallmouth followed that fish out of a foot to two feet of water makes no sense because this time of year you usually think a smallmouth and largemouth going deep pushed off a little bit. And there really isn't a whole lot of cover here besides the grass. So just, just for the viewers at home, what setup do you have going on, Ross? Because they all know what I use. I always talk about it, and they're probably annoyed. But what are you using today as far as rod and reel? I'm throwing a uh, Dobbins Champion Extreme 6.8 drop shot rod with a Shimano um, Stratic CI4. The old one. The old Classic. One. Super lightweight setup. Yeah. Very sensitive. Throwing sinking braid, I can't even remember the name of the brand. I think it was a Japanese brand. Well, there's only a couple companies that I can make it. Yeah, I've had it for like two years on here, and then I'm throwing the new. Uh, and I tied a leader on with the new uh, Yamamoto. Sejoy. Sejoy. I don't know how to pronounce it. Drop shot line, which is solid. I really like that one. The one. Six and a half inch plasma tail. Nice. Oh, you switched back to the bigger one? Yeah, I'm trying it out. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm going back and forth. I started off with a big one in the deep water, and then as we got shallower, I switch to a smaller worm just kind of making that quick adjustment is this all sand down here or are we in grass I basically ended the note on that, on that, you know, that nasty end of the day. Um, just too much wind. That, that place gets hit so badly with the wind, especially midday. Excuse me, we kind of got off around, I think, one or, it's actually more like, well, yeah, one or two that we got off the water. And that place just gets pounded with wind. It was like 20, 20 something miles per hour. It's impossible to control your boat in those, those stupid little aluminum things they call watercrafts. And the motors they give you are terrible. They give you like a, a 35 or 45 uh, pound thrust Minn Kota. That's just, um, it's really bad. What do you think the bite was? Well, first of all, how many, things, how many fish did we caught today? I think combined you guys caught uh, 26 bass. 26 bass? That's what I think. Oh, you had way more high. You must way have higher? You, no, no, you had higher expectations. Well, the last time you were there, you caught Lower, lower. Guess 60. again. I know. So, uh, 14 bass. We got 12. 12, that's good. All right, what do you think the biggest one was? Biggest one was three pounds, six ounces. That's, that's kind of close to it. I think I, well, I don't, we didn't weigh it, but I, I would have to guess our biggest one was around three, uh, ooh, thank you. Went some, pulling some maneuvers there. Uh, about about two, two and a couple quarters, two and, two and three quarters, two and a half, something like that. How many were over that 12 inch slot? Uh, the, all of them pretty much. I didn't count the little guys, we got. with the little guys, they're probably a couple of 14. But like I mean, we're talking small, like this. Yeah. All large mouth. We saw some really nice smallmouth today. I saw a four pound smallmouth. I actually caught a two pound smallmouth and had his four pounder chase chase with the boat, but wasn't as productive. But given the conditions, it wasn't that bad of a day. I and mean, we're fishing like just gin clear water. No, it's not gin clear, but it's really clear. And I think the, the big thing that really played in today's bite is we had a little bit of an algae bloom, and the algae bloom's kind of progressed over these couple of weeks and it's lowered the visibility of the water so I think it's able it's, we're enabled to kind of sneak up on these fish a little bit easier and the grass is, is at its peak right now too so these fish have a lot of shade and a lot of areas to kind of stage up on and the problem is there's not a whole lot of you know there's no docks really there's no brush in the water besides what's on the shoreline so they basically have the option to go deep or stay shallow in the grass so there's not a whole lot they can do and it's pretty easy to figure them out not all of the time they're going to be willing to feed though Okay, so now, last question. What do you think we caught him on? I'm going to say drop shot. Mm -hmm. All our fish came off drop shot. But, um, you know, you're right. I mean, you're right. We caught him deep, but there were some that were shallow, too. That's right. There was that one. Well, like the first, first fish, the first cast, 
and the first fish, which is the biggest one, was the dock fish, and it was that was in three feet of water, and I wasn't even moving my worm. So no top water. Though. Nah, he threw a little bit of it. I was hoping we'd get on a good top water bite. Like you know, like you said, the, the big bite there is either drop shot or top water, and uh, yeah, a little bit of jigs. I haven't gotten like a jig bite in a while, but uh, they're just it's just drop shot year round. Like it's just that's the lure to throw there. Or that's the rig to throw there. But that's that's it for today's video. It wasn't too exciting. You know, we caught some decent fish. Got some decent fish on camera. Uh, had a pretty crazy ending with the, with the dude on, on the trying to help us. He ended up trying to pull us up out of there. He pulled us up out of there, so, so we were fine. And then he ended up getting stuck. So we basically ditched him. And like, what are we gonna do? We're in a John boat. So this dude ended up getting stuck in process of helping us out. So funny, uh, funny way to end the day. I'm sure he wasn't too happy with us. We didn't say much, or I think we said thanks and just ditched him. But uh, it was it was a cool day. Had fun with Ross, and we put a pretty decent hurt on him. I didn't see I didn't see any guy any guys out there getting in any fish. So. Uh, so pretty, pretty successful, um, given, given, like I said, the circumstances, the hot, windy circumstances. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Like I said, if you guys want to check out the link to the Ike Live show, I will have that in the description below. If you guys watched this far, shoot me a funny or random comment so I know that you guys are enjoying these bass dailies. And I'll catch you guys next time on the next episode of Fishing the West.